In this video, we're going to be working through assignment 4-5, number 1, and this example is in a minor key. If you remember in the last video, I mentioned that in a minor key, you have to have a leading tone, or really you almost always have to have a leading tone to support uh, saying that it is in a minor key. So we can see from this example that there are no sharps and no flats in the key signature. The key signature that has no sharps and no flats could either be C major or its relative minor, A minor. Because there is a G sharp you know, here and here, G sharp being a minor second lower than A, I think this points to it being in the key of A minor, and so it is. So we're going to look again, not at the whole phrase, but just at the last two chords of the phrase to decide what kind of a cadence we have here. And in this chapter, we're just talking about authentic cadences, which involve the dominant and the tonic chord. So um, let's take a catalog of the notes that we have in the uh, second to last chord. Well, here we have an E, here we have another E, here we have a G sharp, and here we have a B. So if we add those up down below, we had an E, then we had another E, then we had a G sharp, and then we have a B. And it turns out that in the key of A minor, this chord, E, G sharp, B, is the dominant chord. It's a major dominant because of this G sharp. That's a leading tone. If it wasn't G sharp, if it was G natural, it would be a subtonic chord. And in that case, we'd use a lowercase Roman numeral 5. But we're not going to because it is a major chord. Let's look at our last chord. Here we have an A, here we have a C, here we have an E, and here we have an A. So again, we'll take a catalog or an inventory of those notes down below. There's an A, and then above that was a C, above that was an E, then above that was another A. So this chord, spelled A, C, E, is the tonic chord. It is minor, because uh, A to C is a minor third. So we have a dominant chord, a major dominant chord, followed by a minor tonic chord. And that is an authentic cadence, isn't it? Right? Five to one. Now, we just need to look at our three points here, here, and here, determine if they're the roots of their respective triads. If they are, we have a perfect authentic. If not, it'll be an imperfect authentic. Well, it turns out E is the root of the dominant chord, right? There's our E, the root, the bottom note of the dominant chord. A is the root of the tonic chord. And up here we have another A, and that is also the root of the tonic chord. So yes, we have a perfect authentic cadence. And then lastly, uh, what does our melody line do? Well, it goes from B to A. So that's the second scale degree to the first scale degree. We fill that in two to one. You could have also said it goes from Re to Do if you were using solfege. So in this example, we are in A minor. It's a perfect authentic cadence and the melody line goes from two to one.